Welcome to our fifth video in our SolidWorks CAM technology database series. We have already discussed tools, the tool crib, post processors, and setting up machines. Now we're going to take a look at strategies inside the technology database. This is by far the most important aspect of using SolidWorks CAM. We are able to leverage save strategies to make our programming process smoother and easier. Let's first take a look at how we can add strategies into our technology database right from SOLIDWORKS CAM. I'm going to go ahead and set up my machine crib and post processor are automatically selected. In this case, I'm going to go and use our default tool crib that SOLIDWORKS CAM has set up. Once I'm all ready to go with all of the settings that I need, I'm going to go ahead and run automatic feature recognition. What I want to do is just leverage some of the default information already in the technology database. You can see I now have some tool paths and things already set up. But what we're going to take a look at is what are we doing with our different items. So let's take a look at just this pocket here on top. It's highlighted blue on my screen. The default strategy is rough, rough rest, and finish. Let's say that I'm not a big fan of that and I want to change it. I simply right click on the rectangular pocket, go to parameters, and I'm going to change it to rough and finish. And then hit OK. I can then generate my operation plan. Instead of update, I'm going to go ahead and hit regenerate. It's going to delete everything that I had before and replace it with new ones. These are the blue items that I now see on my screen. First thing I notice is that I'm going to rough mill with a three quarter inch end mill and then I'm going to finish with a half inch end mill. If this strategy is not something that I want, I simply make the changes right here. So let's generate the toolpath for the first item. May or may not be what I want. Looks like it's doing some machining on top as well. So let's make some changes to our operation here. I'm going to go to my roughing tab. I'll get rid of uh, machine island top. Right now it's cutting 50% of the way down. I want to make that 100%. So the depth is going to be a 100% of the tool diameter each time. It's also set to pocket in, uh, excuse me, it's also set to pocket out. If I wanted to do something different, I could then make that selection here as well. If there's any other changes that I would like to make, I can make them at this time. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and I get something a little bit different. Now I'm going to generate from my contour mill. If I like that, great. If I don't, I can also make some changes. Let's edit this as well on our third tab. We can adjust this to 100% of the tool diameter. Now that I have these settings the way I want, this is what I would like to do moving forward. In order to save this back in the technology database, I simply select my feature tree and then I'm going to go to my rectangular pocket. I'm going to right click and then hit save operation plan. I'm going to create a new feature condition and we'll call it Trimec. And then notice I do have the option to set as default. If this is what I would like to use moving forward, I suggest selecting save as default. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay here. I'm gonna get this dialog box to pop up and then I'm simply gonna hit okay. So what I've done in this case is leverage the changes that I made on this part and I've saved them into the technology database. Now, we're going to enter the technology database, tweak and change a couple things if we would like, or just take a look at what we have. Back in my technology database, I can now hit features and operations. I know that it was a rectangular pocket that I saved. I'll make that selection, and then we can see Trimec is listed here at the bottom. I can define the strategy by selecting it here. And if I highlight Trimec and hit edit, I could still make it default right here inside of the technology database. 
if I'm satisfied with the name and everything else here, I can also activate it here or select it. And now I have this set up in here. The first thing I want to point out when saving it from SolidWorks CAM is the feature condition information on the right. I have blind and through as my two subtypes. I also have a stock material condition. I usually like to make this all. If I have something selected like aluminum or steel, it would only work when that is the selection inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM. So by selecting all, I can assure that this strategy is available for all of my material selections. And then we're going to change this to the default of 1000 that most of the other strategies have inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM. And then hit save. Now, any rectangular pocket that is 0 to 1,000 by 0 to 1,000 is going to pull on this default feature condition here. There are a couple other items in here of note. I can select my tool. So I can select a specific tool or I can use an expression. Like if I wanted to have, uh, you know, my, my largest inscribed circle times you know, 0.75 or something like that. So it always picks a tool a little bit smaller than the largest circle. I'm able to do that inside of here. Or I could just leave on the defaults. I can also take a look at my depth curve. I can also take a look at my depth criteria. In this case, it's going to be our feature depth plus something minus something. So if I'm cutting on the outside of a part and I wanted to go a little bit heavy on how deep I cut, I can uh, go ahead and add something to that. And then we have last our operational parameters. In this case, we can control our feed and speed. We can also control the roughing, just like the tab that we saw before. I wanted to adjust my depth. You'll see that it's 100 instead of the 50 that I had before, so I can tweak, modify anything that I want inside of here. We also have an optimize option. So if I wanted to do shortest path or some of the other optimization, so if I maybe had a drilling operation and I wanted it to drill from bottom left to top right, I could set that up and it would always default to that optimization. Once I'm done with everything, this is basically uh, going to allow me to save. I hit this button right up here at the top, save, and now the Trimex strategy that I saved from the data, the Trimex strategy that I saved from SolidWorks CAM is now inside the database. Let's also take a look at, let's also take a look if I want to create a new strategy from the database. This is really straightforward. I hit define strategy when I find the correct type of feature that I want. In our case, we'll stick with rectangular pocket. Once I hit define strategy, I can maybe go to this rough volume mill, rough rest and finish, and copy this. In this case, I'm just going to select it and hit edit, and I'm going to change the name. I want to do just a volume mill and a finish, so let's get rid of the other part of the name in there. And then I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to close it. The next step is to activate the new strategy that I just selected. Down at the bottom, we could see that for blind, I have my rough mill, my rest rough mill, and then my finish. I simply delete the item I don't want. And then I do the same thing for the through condition. So now I have quickly set up a strategy that is going to take advantage of volume mill, roughing, and then it's going to do the finish. So it's very quick and easy to create strategies from inside of SolidWorks CAM or copy and modify strategies right inside my technology database. This is by far one of the most important features we have inside of SolidWorks CAM. This allows us to leverage this information so that we don't have to modify our programming moving forward.